News is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles and thanks so much for joining us. Topping news tonight. To date, there are no confirmed suspected or recorded cases of COVID-19 in the Bahamas. That according to Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who spoke at a televised news conference late this afternoon on the status of the precautions being taken to mitigate against the coronavirus spreading to the Bahamas. And while there are currently no cases here, globally, there has been an increase. The Prime Minister called it a matter of grave concern. To date, there are no confirmed, suspected, or recorded cases of COVID-19 in the Bahamas. However, there has been an increase in the number of countries with reported cases of the virus globally. I want to be clear that when it comes to public health threats, the government will not take any chances. We take this outbreak very seriously. We will utilize the resources necessary to ensure the safety of all Bahamians and residents. Public health is an absolute priority. The Prime Minister says he's been monitoring the outbreak daily while receiving regular updates from health officials. He cautioned the public to rely on information from certified sources like the Ministry of Health, which has been providing regular updates. A national coordinating committee is also being established to coincide with a regional response. Earlier today, I took part in an emergency meeting with other CARICOM heads of government via video conference. We had productive discussions on the development of a regional coordination for the management of COVID-19, including strengthening existing protocols for seaports, and aligning best practices in the region. Caribbean leaders are also seeking to find a balance to its overall response to COVID-19. Leaders also considered whether a regional rapid response team should be reestablished to provide assistance across the region to countries that are in need. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Pearl McMillan, who also addressed the news conference today, said the key to minimizing the spread of the virus is strong early detection methods. She revealed our capacity to now perform in-country testing. We advised by the lab personnel that we will be able to get a presumptive uh, positive or negative within, I, I would say, about 12 hours or so, but there will need to be an additional level of sequencing and everything for you know the virus and you will, we, we should be able to have a concrete positive or negative within two days but we have been um, you know we've been working with the Pan American Health Organization and the CDC and others and we would have actually received um, a substantive amount of testing kits it's not as if we are going to go out and do mass testing but we definitely have enough in country to do the, necess the required testing to determine whether or not we, you know, somebody who presents with the symptoms, some respiratory sy symptoms, and the necessary epidemiological link, the history of travel for us to do, you know, we, we can test. I think we have about 50 in country, and we have additional on order. Currently, there are eight. 85,403 confirmed cases worldwide, with 79,000 plus in China alone. There have been 39,746 recovered cases reported worldwide. The U.S. recorded its first coronavirus death over the weekend in, the, in Washington state. Up to yesterday, the total confirmed number of deaths 
worldwide is 2,933. Well, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force to get a boost in numbers soon as it prepares to enlist more than 100 new recruits. National Security Minister Marvin Dames made the announcement today during a church service to kick off the Defense Force's 40th anniversary celebrations. Dames said that as the force is air, said that the force is earmarked for continued growth, 120 new recruits will be added to the 1,500 strong complement. Your force complement is performing exemplary, but we are aware of your demand for additional human capital required to adequately achieve your mandate. Therefore, we are supportive of your needs to increase your force's strength to at least 2,000 by the year 2022. He applauded the force for all of its work, hard work on Abaco and Grand Bahama in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. Minister Dames also confirmed that a promotional exercise is on the horizon for the force. Yes, we are in fact working on promotion, not me, but the acting Commodore and his team. And it is hoped that very shortly that you will have a promotional exercise. I'm certain that all of you are aware of that. And to those petty officers and below, I promise that we made as a government since coming into office that we will extend your years and give you an additional five years of service. I want to just tell you at this point that the cabinet would have approved that amendment to the legislation. Um, and I hope to lay that shortly before the Honorable House of Assembly. Her Majesty's coroner will investigate a police involved in shooting that left a man dead. According to the police report, officers were on routine patrol on Washington Street off Balfour Avenue around 11 last night when they stopped a black vehicle. A man reportedly exited the vehicle with a firearm and pointed it in the direction of the officers. The officers were said to be in fear for their lives and opened fire on the man. According to the report, the man ran to the back of a home where he was found dead. Police say a 9mm pistol was recovered. Also from the crime beat, police investigating an overnight shooting that at a nightclub that left two people injured. The incident happened shortly after 1 a.m. at a nightclub on Nassau Street. Police say a gunman entered the club, opened fire on the patrons and then fled the scene. A woman and a man were taken to hospital where the female remains in critical condition. As for the male, he was treated and discharged. Police are appealing to members of the public who may have any information that can assist with this investigation to contact the Central Detective Unit at 502-9991 or 2 Crime Stoppers at 328 Tips or the nearest police station. And three officers are in hospital after the building they were extinguishing a fire in collapsed. Police suspect this was an act of arson. Fire services officers were responding to reports of a fire at the Precious Rogers Senior Citizens Home around 5 this morning. When they arrived, they met an unoccupied building on the property on fire. As the officers attempted to extinguish the blaze, the building reportedly collapsed, leaving three of them injured. They were taken to hospital, where at last report, they were listed in stable condition. None of the residents of the home were injured during the incident. Investigations continue. Well, still ahead tonight, the director of the LEAD Institute advises government not to get carried away on marijuana. Plus, Bahamar takes guests from field to fork. So stay with. Hey. Speaking of ideas, though. Ah! <laughs> yes, so I had an idea, but. Here we go again. So broken, boy. Murder. That guy on your passport, son. You better leave him murder. Hey, stop. Let's start. 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 We want to say a story. Well, let's be together as we gotta sing to you. I'll be happy birthday. Find the greasy crew. We can buy a white young snack and all of us can share it. Bum chicky, bum chicky, bum chicky, bum chicky, bum chicky, it's a baby. 
Next tonight, Chairman of the Disaster Reconstruction Authority John Michael Clark says the psychological impact of Hurricane Dorian on public sector workers has hampered recovery efforts in the wake of Hurricane Dorian. It has been understated the impact and, and we see the physical destruction of what happened in Abaco. What is left out in the conversation is the impact on government services on that island. We were relying on administrators and government staff from the agencies to assist in manning the response to Hurricane Dorian. And I think for the first time in this country's history, the persons we were relying on to manage the impact, they were so severely impacted that that management became critically difficult. Dorian destroyed chunks of Abaco and Grand Bahama in early September. The storm impacted nearly 30,000 people and killed at least 74 people, according to the official death toll. Clark added that things were especially difficult in Abaco. For all intents and purposes, we pretty much lost government function in Abaco for a while. Administrators had no place to live. Government offices could not function. And we took um, the RVs, and, and some of them are still, we have 100 um, recreational temporary vehicles for public servant staff on that island now. And I could show you, I, am, I get texts every day, apart from the domes, that everybody asks me about, but I get texts from government agencies every day asking for more RVs because more staff is needed to get government response and government offices back up to 100% capacity. Many people have criticized the pace of recovery efforts, but like other officials, Clark says recovery will not happen overnight. Well, director of the National Lead Institute, Troy Clark, says he is cautiously optimistic about the Minnesota administration's conversation about marijuana. Clark says while it's clear something needs to be done, he believes the government must not get carried away when it comes to the controversial issue. Jasmine Brown reports. The marijuana issue has been hotly debated in recent months after the government set up a commission to look into the matter. Clark says the fact that they are taking a detailed look at a provocative issue means a lot. Well, we are excited that the government is moving into that direction, but I am cautiously optimistic about the direction that we are taking with uh, the legislation in this. The release of the Marijuana Commission's report earlier this month revealed the Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana is split on whether to legalize marijuana for recreational use. The preliminary report that was tabled in Parliament stated that more data needs to be explored to enable the Commission to come to a consensus on the matter. The Commission does, however, recommend decriminalization of up to one ounce of cannabis. The report notes that the Commissioners are aware that decriminalization is in effect a form of legalization of the recreation use of cannabis as it is in effect authorizing persons to possess up to an ounce of cannabis. I would like to caution our government if we're going to decriminalize marijuana usage small amount we have to look at decriminalizing it along with developing or establishing what we call a drug treatment court because when you decriminalize you are going to open the gate for many of our young people who, uh, who normally would not have taken uh, marijuana usage. Clark cautioned officials about opening up a can of worms as he called on them to hope for the best and prepare for the worst. A can of worms is going to be open up and more ills are going to be attached to that. And it's good that you want to expunge the record, but let's do this thing right. 
decriminalized marijuana with drug rehabilitation card or drug treatment card. It is very effective, and 9 out of 10 persons, research have shown us that, who goes through a drug treatment card uh, don't end back up in the criminal justice system. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks a lot, Jasmine. When our news comes back from the break, a new dining experience at Bahamar enables guests to pick their own herbs before they prepare their own meals. And later, we count down the most memorable quotes of the week. So stay tuned. Hey. Speaking of ideas, though. Ah. <laughs> yes, all of the idea, but. Here we go again. Spoken by? The field to fork way of running a kitchen is on the rise. And over at Bahamar, the resort has given guests the opportunity to pick their own herbs for use in their own meals. Carl Joaquin has a story. More and more restaurants around the world are catching on to the trend. So what we have here is oregano, then we have, we have thyme, we also have garlic, garlic chives, we have sage, we also have celery. So these are some of the ingredients that we use in the kitchen. Chef Michael Davis at the kitchen at Bahamar says while they've created a unique experience where guests and locals can create their own meals and have fun doing it, they're also able to pick the herbs that'll add the flavor. But three three months now, this, um, this garden has been put together mm -hmm. and time to time we'll come out and just freshen it up and take herbs and use it inside the kitchen. Right, and you plan more, obviously. Yes, yes. Uh, so when this is done, we'll plan more to we cultivate to make sure that it stays consistent on a daily basis based on the season that we're in, mm -hmm. we'll use the garden. Depending on the type of dish, whether Mediterranean or Italian, there's an herb on the outdoors to give it a kick. Basically the same thing that we have over there is over here, but the only thing is we have parsley, so we still got the garlic, the garlic chives, we still got the oregano, and we still got parsley over here and rosemary as well. So rosemary is added and parsley is added parsley. to Parsley. Yeah. How, how hard is it to grow parsley in the moment? Well, it's not hard once you are taking care of um, the fertilization of the soil mm -hmm. and you're making sure that you're maintaining it on a daily basis to keep it nice, fresh and green. And if you had to ask me my favorite in the garden, something called the garlic chive. Take it and you rub it. It's infused. You rub it and you smell. I know you can't mm -hmm. um, smell it on TV, TV, but if you take it here and you smell, you'll smell the garlic inside of the chives. A perfect date idea or something different for ladies night. The kitchen at Bahamar gives everyone the opportunity to chef it up for just $55 per person. For Our News Weekend, I'm Kyle Joaquin. All right, thanks a lot, Kyle. Whether you're a professional artist or simply a lover of art and craft, finding the right supplies at home can nearly be impossible at times. But now the first-of-a-kind professional art supply store will give visual artists access to supplies only found abroad. Sherwin Williams, a brand long associated with interior and exterior paint, has changed the game with a new distribution spot. So the Sherwin Williams Art Store is one of its kind in this country. So it's much needed for the Bahamas in itself because for a long time our artists have been feeling left out. Okay, so we have been four months in and now this is the way of the future. We're trying to create a revolution, revolutionary cause where us as artists have a home. What you can find here are products such as our Stabilo pens, we have the Posca markers, we have the Golden Open series and Heavy Bali acrylic paints. We also have Watercolor by Sakura and the Montana Gold. The artists, teachers and students can also get discounts at the new store. And most importantly, it eliminates the hassle of ordering their supplies abroad. So artists and students, we offer a 10% discount. And teachers, we offer a 13% discount as well. And the benefit of 
shopping locally is that you don't have that long wait or you don't have to go through and worry about uh, added fees from the shipping companies as well. We count down the most memorable quotes of the week that's coming up when our news, the weekend edition, returns. doing on this court was traveling. When you see me travel to go watch my free NBA pass game, I can come back out and smoke it. Spicy. Free NBA pass. So whenever we have doing, each month they send a lucky customer on an all-expense pay trip to the States to watch a game. And even if you don't win that, you can have a local experience because they can pay for all your food and drinks and participate in bars. So you still got a good time, bro. I can get in on that. All you have to do is sign up for Trio and you enter the drawing. Ferrari, don't lie. Ferrari. Ferrari. Denied like this guy, make sure you come through in the clutch. Sign up for Trio and be a rev NBA All Star. Guarantee your chance to win a free trip to an NBA game every month when you sign up for Trio today. Call 601 8992. Terms and conditions apply. Rev, you and us together. Finally tonight, it's the time when we take a look back at the most memorable moments of the week of news in our Quote of the Week segment. Coming in at number three is Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who announced on Monday the establishment of an immigration strike force to aggressively pursue illegal migrants in the Bahamas. We must pursue illegal immigrants aggressively. This is the Bahamas, and Bahamians are first. I have given the minister the responsibility for our immigration, the task of establishing a strike force whose mandate would be to aggressively pursue illegals. In at number two is Davicio Adderley, the brother of a suspected armed robber who was killed by police in an early morning shootout. Davicio called his brother's killing by police an injustice. That's injustice. That, that right there, that's like, that's personal. Mm -hmm. Over 58 shots. Come on, man. I ain't give no one right here or whatever. He might rob yeah. or do this or whatever, yeah. But come on. Meanwhile, the grieving father, Sean Adderley, also believes police went too far in the level of force used against his son. His comments take the number one spot for quote of the week. Oh, he was a guy, son. It's really sad. He was a guy, so he ain't like, I know how my son is, how my son go. 